Pedro Shy Limited Broadcasting Megacorp. Hello, darlings. I hope things have been well with you, because around the castle, things haven't been so good. The other night, the Duke was bitten by a spider during when he was still asleep. So he has a very large and painful welt, and we have mobilized the entire staff to search the castle for the spider. Several spiders have been found, but we did not know if it was the one who bit the duke, so they killed them all anyway, and are still keeping an eye out. But it has been a good way to get rid of the cobwebs around the castle. You'd be surprised at how they accumulate in a very high ceiling room during the dim months of winter. <laughs> The Duchess Show. Maybe it's just some sort of a sweat thing. Sorry. Of course it's gonna be heavy to the jowl. The Duchess of Pedroshire. This person, be a bitch. There is a you in cot. And I turn it out. The Duchess Show is filmed before a well-behaved studio audience. Oh, the old beef and into the George. At any rate, you would be rather shocked by what the Duke and I did a couple of weeks ago. I'm still shocked that we did it, but it was a surprise. First of all, the Duke said, oh, Georgina, we're going for a weekend getaway. And I was quite excited because I do love weekend getaways with the Duke. And then I asked him, I was like, oh, where are we going? And he said, St. Louis, Missouri. And I was like, oh, why? And he said, well, it's more than just a weekend getaway. It's our civic duty. So I said, what possible sort of civic duty would take us to St. Louis, Missouri? He said, it's an event for civic leaders, and you and I are the leaders of the duchy, and uh, it's our obligation to attend. So, when we arrived, I was very pleasantly surprised, because I thought it was probably going to be some dull city planning, or civil engineering, or something rather boring like that. Some sort of, you know, seminar type of thing, panel discussions on economic development, and... Blah, 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 blah. But when we arrived, you no, know, it was the most exciting thing. You would be amazed. I don't know if you even are aware that this thing exists. It's called the Trans World Halloween and Haunted Attractions Trade Show. And when we got there, and I was like, oh, this is so wonderful. This is like some kind of Halloween theme park. I had no idea this even existed. This is our civic duty. How? I didn't realize the victories could be so fun. And the Duke said, well, you have noticed the surrounding communities at Christmas time, they put up big displays in their downtown areas with lights and decorations, things like that. So I was thinking, we should do it for Halloween. We always decorate the castle. Why not do the entire duchy? And I said, that's a capital idea. I think we should. We should expand beyond just the haunted castle and have a whole haunted duchy for the entire month of October. And that's what this trade show is all about, for people who do those kind of things. If you are running a haunted house that you walk through, or something like that, if you're just looking for decorations. There were so many things. There were there was a, a dark room where you would walk through and all the spooky things. But they weren't really that spooky because some of them were, you know, you could tell they were just fake and not, not, not that frightening. But they were meant to jump scare people. But it didn't really work with me because, you know. I'm not very easily frightened of things. As long as there are no wedding cakes, though, crappy wedding cakes and couples and things like that, I'm fine. Although, there were lots of clown things, which totally mystify me. I don't think clowns are that scary. They're just sort of annoying. Like, you're not funny. And I don't want a balloon. Back off. Where's the scary stuff? The little clowns riding 
Ferris wheels and things like that, and I just wasn't enthused. And I told the Duke, no, 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 I don't want any clown theme thing. Let's go for the rest of the stuff. So, what's one thing we found? And, and this makes me want to start like a, a ladies' dress shop in Natachi, and I just might do it so I can use these, these mannequins all year round, but they're like regular sort of department store mannequins, you know, sort of generic looking with the bald heads, you know, and they're just standing there like this, and all of a sudden, Oh, it was absolutely terrifying. So I was thinking, well, they'd make great Halloween decorations, but they would make better mannequins in an actual store, and it would freak people out every time they came in to buy something. <laughs> but then I don't know if anybody would come in that often, but that's the kind of dress shop I would have. Lots of scary mannequins. It would be great. Oh, I suppose that's why I've never really gone into retail. Nobody really gets me. You know, they just don't get it. It wouldn't bother, I would probably shop in it, in it. I would buy things in a shop like that. I think it would, yeah. But other people probably wouldn't. So, there goes that idea. But we did get some very lovely, scary things to absolutely terrify the children, and hopefully a lot of the adults too. That's always our goal. We like to have a really scary touchy. So, looking forward to October already, and I'm already coming up with... Do you know you can turn Barbie dolls into monsters with just a little bit of modeling clay? It's quite easy. Oh my God, I'm going to have to show you the Barbies I've been making. They are impressive, they scare even me. I look at them, I'm like, oh my God, I hope they don't start walking around in my room, but uh, I have to leave them out so the clay can dry so I can repaint them and make them even more frightening. So that's what I've been up to lately. Duke's been getting bitten by spiders and and I've been creating scary Bobby dolls, but I got all inspired at that Transwell Halloween Haunted Attraction show. The Duchess Show is brought to you by the United Biscuit Company, the makers of Twiglet, and Classic Tips and Sales, and Econa Bloodstock Agency. Control with the whole Game of Thrones season eight. Oh, it's starting Sunday night. Georgina, are you going to have a platter of appetizers and things that we can enjoy and special drinks for the episode? I was like, yes, darling. I've arranged for all the special drinks and snacks and little desserts. We're going to have. Oh, you're going to be so happy. You're just going to sit there in front of your show and have all the delicious things around you. That's what I do as a duchess. I always support the duke in anything he, he wants. That doesn't mean I'm exactly enthusiastic about it. I don't know if any of you out there can relate, if you have a, a, a mate or a loved one or perhaps even a co-worker or friend who is talking about season eight, Game of Thrones, nonstop, incessantly, and like it's going to be the best thing ever. I am worried about disappointment. I'm worried about what happens if the Duke's favorite character gets killed. How will I deal with it? He's going to be so depressed for such a long time. He's going to be dysfunctional. This could affect his performance in the cable toss because, you know, one of his favorite characters gets killed right before the important Highland Games. I'm very... There's, there's all these other implications. All these other things going on. But... Um, what I'm going to do now is, oh yes, the other day, I have to tell you what happened the other day. The Duke was watching something on YouTube, and he loves it. Preston Jacobs, you know, the whole thing. He, he runs around the house now. He learned this song on Preston Jacobs' channel. And he runs around the house going, thrones and bones and thrones and bones and thrones and bones. Mm -hmm. I'm about to lose my mind. But someone, someone made a comment on a video. Some saucy person. And they made the comment, shit is coming. And the Duke was like, all I write. And he was like, what are they saying? It's going to be shit. It's not going to be shit. It's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. This is going to be everything we've ever wanted. I hate it when people say things are not going to be good when I know they are. So it took a while, about four hours to get over that. So you can imagine how things are going to be if something bad happens to someone he likes or things don't go, oh. 
Exactly. If you would excuse me, I'm going to prevent a uh, certain issue. There was a hound that needed to be released out into the castle grounds so we could avoid any sort of complaining from the Duke about sort of peeing. We want to keep on his good side right now, especially until after the show is over and we know how things are going to go. But I thought, since um, I'm more of a book reader myself, uh, book wankers, as, as some people refer to them, I thought for the book review today, we would do a review of the first, uh, uh, what is it, the first volume in the A Song of Ice and the Fire series by George R. R. Martin. Around here, we just call him Grrrr. Because, you know, it's kind of like, that's what his name looks like. Grrrr. So, this is the book that the show was based on. And, uh, overall, it's a pretty good book. I enjoyed it. I like the different characters' points of view and how things change. You can read the same event from three different points of view and it's different every time. I mean, some of the events are the same, some of the dialogue is the same, but you get an entirely different outlook on the way things are happening. Sometimes you see it, what's happening is good, sometimes you see it as bad. So, you know, hey, it really succeeds with that. And the characters are quite interesting. They're quite complex and well developed. It gets better as you go on. This is the introductory volume. I just did the uh, Harry Potter series review. So I don't know if I should review the whole series or just this one book. I'll just go ahead and do the whole series. That's what I'll do. That way we'll just cut right to the chase. The series isn't finished. So, uh, I don't know how everything ends and I can't even spoil the ending for you. So, uh, things are up in the air. You don't know what's going to happen with these characters where they'll end up, who's going to live, who's going to die, who will win. It's completely, you just don't know. Although, I have a feeling that things will work out better in the book than they do on the show. I have dread feelings for the show. I really do. I think that uh, what's going to happen will be the most popular thing for the viewers of the show. But I think that the true ending will come from Gurm's twisted little mind, which is very much better than what people think. Not what people think of him, but what other people think the show should be. So, I went through and highlighted some things through this book. And there's all kinds of green lines and blue lines and pink lines. And right now I don't even know why. I can't figure out why they're there, what it means, or why I color-coded them in the first place. What was I thinking when I read this book for the first time years ago? I have no idea. But a dog wants to come in. I'll be right back. Would you like a delicious treat? I have some for good dogs. Yeah, you are a very, very good boy. We love you. You're quite handsome. You've done a good thing. trying to make because afterwards you'll never remember why you highlighted anything. I think they're rather silly. The only reason I had them was because they looked bright and they were on sale. You could buy one and get one for a penny. So I was like, oh, look at those. They're bright orange and bright green. I simply must have them. And I used them and I, uh, anyway. A lot of people complain about the violence in this series, but it was really not that graphic. I mean, you know, there's references to people being disemboweled and decapitated and dismembered, burned alive and flayed alive and uh, starved to death so they have to eat their own fingers. But, you know, aside from that, the violence really isn't that graphic 
all at Greyrath. And let me tell you, the HBO show is much sexier than the books. Uh, aside from a, a naked scepter, there really isn't a great deal of nudity. And uh, the sex scenes are rather limited and not very detailed. So, overall, I would give this book four out of five stars. It's a big adventure, excellent world building, and uh, overall, it's a ripping good story. The entire series, I would say, would get probably about three and a half stars because it does get to drag a bit there at the end, and I'm really hoping it'll be finished someday. But I'm not going to rag on Gurm about it. Too many people do, and it's not a very classy act. He'll get around to it when he gets around to it, and if he doesn't, well then, we could all finish the books the way we want them to be, and I'm sure he doesn't want that. By the way, I've decided that during the show, I'm going to record my own show, and it will be about Aunt Marjorie's tin. And at the end, what we're going to do is we're going to compare the episodes. Here's the final episode of Game of Thrones, season eight, and compare it with episode six of the Duchess show, the story of Aunt Marjorie's tin. And we'll see, we'll see which is a better show. I have every confidence that the Marjorie's Tin story will be fabulous and Game of Thrones final episode will be a huge disappointment for everyone. Season 2, episode... Is that cat going to be in the way? Opening scene, take one. <laughs> Apparently, I need to get my glasses. Well, I don't know I have glasses, but I do have them. And uh, I only wear them when I'm driving, so I don't run over people. Otherwise, I don't see them. I'm gonna fine without them. It's hard for me to read. Somebody writes something very small and it's old and not very far away. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I can't read that. Not without my glasses. Anyway. <laughs> Keep going. I think the Duke wants me to stand with my butt up against the wall. But I don't know. Not at the moment. Oh, yes. Well. <laughs> the Duke. Duke is being a bit. He keeps saying, shit is coming, shit is coming. No, he doesn't say that, I do. <laughs> this has been a Hedroshire Limited Broadcasting Megacorp Production.